This is the Nurkin Gustafson instructional design model. I've looked at two or three different graphics of this model, but it hadn't stuck in my memory. The name from the two authors were not helpful either. There are other ID models such as ADI, R2D2, and iCare, and those have are all acronyms and therefore built have built-in mnemonics. Camp is the name of a major dairy company in Minnesota where I grew up and all the ovals remind me of the spots on the cows. I've decided devices for the others too but not the good old Nurkin Gustafson. I decided about four weeks ago in our discussion board that I would attempt this virtual world version of the Nurkin Gustafson ID model in order to try to help other graduate students and me finally learn this model with some memory permanence. As you'll see, I've tried to add visual cues in the construction of this 3D model of the instructional design model to help visual learners tie the concept to the phases or the steps in the model. So here we have the Nurkut and Gustafson ID model as a factory of sorts. Uh, you see the different buildings. There's the problem determination building, number one. Number two is the design building. And number three is the development building. Let's go right in there, right into it. As we enter the first building, the problem identification building, or problem determination building, we reach the front desk. And like the information desk in a building, this is the first thing we see our as we encounter the problem. Here we'll begin the needs assessment and task analysis in identify problem. Next we'll move on to the data center which houses the learners entry-level skills where we'll start collecting data from existing knowledge, skills, learning styles, attitude, and limitations. We can move next to the planning room, which has plenty of chalkboards to scribble out and revise. This area of the model is where we first start to target in on what the learners should learn. And that's where we find or start to formulate the instructional goals. You may note in other drawings of this model that there is not a set order between the learner's skills and instructional goals section. They should occur at the same time, and I'll show you that here. Go back to the model. It goes from either direction from identify problems. As long as that happens, then we're doing the right thing. So back into instructional goals. From there, we move on to organize. And I've seen different versions of the, the model where it says organize, organize management, or organize and managing. Finally, in this problem determination building, we plan, organize, coordinate, evaluate, and report again with the SME or client. And so that's what the uh, conference table is for. And the file cabinets. On to building two in our tour which is the design building. In the design building we begin to develop our objectives. Moving along we take the knowledge we have learned of instructional goals and the learner attributes to develop objectives making sure to keep those on target with our instructional goals. Next into the further into the design building we specify strategies. Now the rest of the model was harder for me to visually represent. I decided to leave it abstract showing these steps in general terms. Perhaps a follow-up build would improve uh, the look of the, the model. In this step we would consider the learner profile, aptitude treatment interaction, presentation strategies, and perception learning and communication. From here, we go to specify media. Just as we need to decide what to watch on our big screen, we need to decide media characteristics and media selection. Characteristics must focus on what works for our problem, objectives, and learners. Selection must ensure the students learn the objectives. 
as we move into the last building in our tour, we go into the development stage. The first area in the development stage is to select the development materials. These may be from a library of existing materials and or creation of new materials. Most importantly to consider is that they align with the objectives. From there, let's go over to the laboratory where we will analyze the results. In this step, we look very closely at formative evaluation. Summative evaluation comes after completion of the development phase. Here we look at effectiveness, efficiency, cost, user acceptance, and logistics, continually keeping the objectives in mind. The next phase or step in the development phase is to revise materials. This step can recur in a cycle of revision until criterion levels, behaviors, and degree statements from objectives are met. I tried to represent this by taking the original black car model uh, that was being created in this factory and now exhibiting a, uh, a white car. So, the last stop in our tour is in the development building is uh, the implementation. Actually, there's one more step, and that is the prototype. We need to create and test a prototype model. Only after continued formative evaluation of the model do we move it out the door to full delivery. Of implementation. Now the fun thing about this model um, is that as I step through it sequentially um, it may or may not um, happen exactly in that order. Of course we're going to go through the different buildings or the different stages of design um, but as there's no set direction of how to proceed through the building in each building there's no real defined way of saying well you have to do this before you do that and you have to do this other before you do the next um, there are some procedures that are pretty set you need to develop your goals and objectives before you start developing or revising anything but uh, for example uh, let me oops, go in this model over to the uh, the laboratory and as the the narration that I uh, I already spoke uh, as the narration pointed out um, you can go from selecting materials to analyzing results to revising materials back to analyzing those results back to revising again back to the results back to revising again it can just keep going on and on and on until you think you have something and then you have the prototype which you can then test and test and test and so there's no real defined way of here you have to do it exactly this way and if you stop or exit the building before or later then you know you're fired it, it's not as it's not as set in stone as that so anyway here's the uh, instructional design model from Nurk and Gustafson as shown in a different light